Welcome to Make Your Money Matter with Brad Barrett, the show that aims to change the way you think about wealth management. Brad is a financial advisor, established radio host, and author of Retire Right. He is a managing director and partner at One Capital Management, an SEC-registered investment advisory firm managing over $4 billion for clients across the nation. Brad and his team are dedicated to helping clients protect and preserve their assets so they can reach their investment and retirement goals. And now, your host of Make Your Money Matter, Brad Barrett. Welcome to Make Your Money Matter. I'm your host, Brad Barrett. I'm also a managing director and partner here at One Capital Management. And today on the show, we're going to talk about the three phases of life, particularly with your finances, that you are in. We're going to talk about this because knowing which of these financial phases of your life you're in can help you better plan to build, protect, and ultimately enjoy your assets. And here's the hint, people, no matter what your age is. That's a key here in what we're going to talk about today. But before we get started, to find out more about me or any one of our advisors here at One Capital Management, you can go to our website at onecapital.com. You can click on the media tab and you can download and subscribe to the Make Your Money Matter show. You can also set some time with us a discovery meeting, what we call here is our first meeting with a prospective client to help us better understand your goals and objectives with your money. So again, you can go to our website at onecapital.com or you can give us a call at 805-410-5454. And with that, let's get into it. So as I mentioned at the top of the show here, I think knowing which phase you are in really helps us better plan. And as an advisor, it helps me when I go through a discovery meeting with a client, which is our first meeting, to really walk through the questions and not just ask about, you know, quantitative numbers or, you know, numerical data, right? Your income, you know, uh, your, your debts, your assets. I mean, those are all important, but also the qualitative questions. I speak about this a lot. And again, knowing these is really important. Let me give you an analogy. So every year we see what? We see the same months, same holidays, same seasons, right? We are in July right now as of the writing and the recording of this week's podcast. We are just celebrated July 4th. We are in summer as the season. I mean, it's all somewhat pretty predictable, right? Now, while we may not know when, say, a winter storm will hit, we can usually count on the fact that winter will likely bring colder weather. The same can be said for financial phases. While not always easy to predict, you can find patterns if you look for them. And this is where I always feel a good advisor should share this because if we have experience, then we can be able to share what to look for and how to find these patterns. But again, I think many of you might be out there going like, okay, but how does knowing a financial phase pattern help? When it comes to planning or financial planning, the answer is to me a lot. So let's first dive into what are financial phases. There's a, I think a natural flow to life and specifically to money habits throughout the year. Like for example, most of us tend to spend more around the holidays because of gifts and parties, right? We all know this. In fact, many of us save up for our holiday endeavors. Now, when January hits, people take a look at their budget, they set goals for the year and they attempt what I call a financial diet. This is the new year, new you. We do this with our gym memberships. We do this with our finances. It's okay. You can be honest with yourself. I've done it too. All right. But it's important to kind of dissect this. Okay. Now the same can happen in the summer as people splash out on, let's say vacations or enjoy, you know, a bunch of activities with their family. So we have different cash outflows throughout the year. And there's patterns that you can see that show up in actually spending and saving habits. Like if we can all remember when we graduated college or, you know, we were graduating and, you know, we probably lived on a tight budget with less savings. Whereas let's say an established professional in a career might be more focused on long-term goals, such as maybe buying a home or saving for retirement. So again, different, what I call ages and stages, different seasons of life, different phases. Now, This isn't the same necessarily for everyone. You know, while the year can offer similar periods of spending and saving, like each individual, all of us, we have our own plans, priorities, and and habitual natures that make them unique. They make them ours. So if you enjoy saving, for example, maybe you take vacations during 
uh, the shoulder seasons, right? The off seasons, if you will, to take advantage of maybe lower hotel and airfare prices, or or maybe you sign up for a credit card, paying it off every month, remember, okay? That maybe supports your travel habit with a 0%, right? You got to think of free rooms, reduced flights, et cetera, et cetera. Or uh, maybe if you also go on big on your birthday, for example, like Veronica and I always joke, she's like, hates her birthday. And I don't know, I don't necessarily love my birthday, but I guess contrasted to her, it feels like in our family, like I'm the one celebrating the birthdays, but I don't know if anyone else can relate to that, but it's like, we, we might go big for a birthday, but really on my birthday, we just celebrate both of ours. Our anniversary also happens to be in the summer. So it's kind of like my birthday at the end of the summer tends to be where we celebrate her, us, me. So we kind of go big. Now we create a plan to automatically maybe save money every month into what we'll call a birthday fund, right? So when the time comes each year, we're ready. Many of us do things with this. It may not be a birthday or other things, right? Now, the same is true when you look at life patterns or saving and investing. If you had or if you land a well-paying job out of college or, or just out of trade school, whatever it might be, right? You might spend more lavishly than the average 20-something would, correct? If you're in your 20s still trying to figure your stuff out, you're probably not spending as lavishly as maybe if you've got a career right out of the gate with a high paying job when you're 20 years old. Or, you know, someone who joined the FIRE movement, which I've been talking about a lot, right? The financial independent movement, right? You know, you contribute to your retirement plan or save differently. A lot of the clients I work with and they're younger, we start that conversation of what I call the 70 20 10 rule. You live on 70%, save 20% for short term and 10% for long term. And then we base it from there. So, how does knowing all this help, right? I think with all things in life, right, knowing the patterns can help you plan for the future, right? If flying home for the holidays, you know, with a sack full of gifts is your pride and joy, right? You can plan ahead by only eating in or maybe cutting back on other entertainment for a few months in advance of that. Like we always prioritize some of the things that are important to us and that's good. For example, if you love having happy hour, let's say with friends every week, uh, maybe, you know, offer to host it at your house, for example, to save on some things, right? Maybe rotate uh, who brings the drinks and the apps. Like there's a lot of ways you can do things. And I, by the way, I'm sharing this experience from clients who have shared with me how they do things, right? And so I wanted to go through that. So let's go into these phases, okay? I've spoken enough about why this is important. So let's talk about what phase I'm in and then talk about the phases as they come up, all right? The economic life phase you're in just to be clear, isn't necessarily tied to your age. I want to bring this up, okay? There's different phases we talk about in the retirement planning world. Like you learn your trade or your craft. You, you spend your 30 years like yearning and, uh, and saving, right? And then ultimately spending. That's kind of the high-level view of phases. The phases I'm going to go through here are going to be more open-ended and have not a lot to do with your age necessarily. And most people assume that, okay? Now, we've uncovered in the past couple minutes that the phases actually better reflect where you are in your life, the season, if you will, which is split, in my opinion, into three different phases. Phase one, build and grow. Phase two, transition. And phase three, distribute and deploy. Stay connected. Get frequent updates on the show. Follow Brad Barrett and Make Your Money Matter on most social media platforms. And catch full episodes of Make Your Money Matter streaming now on our YouTube channel. To schedule your no-obligation appointment, go to OneCapital.com or call 805-410-5454. All right, so phase number one, build and grow. During this phase, you want to decide on your long-term goals and we want to plan for them. This is, by the way, maybe a Holy Spirit repetition for someone out there who's like, ah, yeah, I probably need an advisor. You know, I, I, I'm thinking about it. I've been listening to the show. I mean, this is, this is a calling, okay, because you cannot get to the other phases of your life until you start the first phase. Like you can't all of a sudden in baseball game, go to second base and be like, yeah, I just didn't want to do first base. It doesn't work that way. So we have to start somewhere. You got to go from home where you're at right now to first base. All right. So let me ask you a question is saving for retirement a priority. Now I don't care if you're 20 years old, 30 years old, 40 years old, listening to this, maybe you're older than that and you're getting closer to retirement. But you really want to ask yourself, is saving for you and your family for tomorrow important to you today? It's an important question to ask yourself. The build and grow phase is also about 
protecting your future earnings, not just contributing to them, but protecting them, right? It's a good time to look at certain things, create an estate plan, maybe put insurances in place if you have a young family. A lot of this comes through in a financial plan conversation because you wanna be able to protect what's coming later, right? It gives you peace of mind while you're in phase one, which is build and grow. Phase two, we'll call transition. During this phase, I think it's important to understand what you've built during your years of savings, right? It's also the time to figure out how you wanna live once you decide to leave your job, leave full employment, go into retirement. I think more, and I'm gonna say this multiple times today, and just, you know, you can roll your eyes at me if you'd like, but working with a financial advisor to do a financial, you know, wealth forecast, a financial plan is important to project how well you have saved. One of the biggest questions I get when I'm meeting with people is really, well, there's two, right? One is, will I always have enough money for myself, for my family, and will I have enough? And th those are two part questions, right? And the, and the other one really is, is have I done good enough job where I'm at right now? If I meet with someone who's 30 years old, we still got 20 years to plan, that's one thing. If I'm meeting with a 55 year old right now, we only got maybe a couple years or, or five, maybe 10 years at most to go through this, it changes the dynamic a little bit. So we wanna make sure that you help answer for yourself how well you've done. And by the way, don't be ashamed of it. Don't be shy of it, right? It's important to look at it on its face and actually answer the question because if the answer is no, it's not been great thus far, we need to make some changes, wouldn't you wanna make those changes as soon as you can? And by the way, on the flip side of that, if it is great, wouldn't you wanna know that? So you almost feel more motivated in the latter years of your life, before retirement, I should say, latter years of your career, to become more financially free, maybe to move the, the goalpost up a few years for retirement. I mean, these are all great answers. You can actually get answered for you through actually looking at it, going through a financial plan, working with an advisor, or just running your numbers with you and your spouse and really sitting down and owning it. So phase number two is really important, the transition phase. I mean, again, during this phase, it's important to factor in you know, different moves, right? Uh, do you wanna stay in your home? Do you wanna downsize? Do you wanna upgrade, right? Are there any plans to buy a second home, to travel? I mean, there's so many factors to take into account here, right? And I think it's also critical to assess the risk you're taking in your portfolio, something we do with our clients all the time. This is the time you really have a good plan for protecting your assets. All right, phase number three, I call the distribute and deploy phase, otherwise known as the spending phase, right? In this phase, obviously understanding where and how you are going to pull from your assets is crucial. I mean, there are important strategies to think about and ultimately tax consequences to consider, right? So if you have, you know, majority of your assets in a tax deferred account, you want to make sure you take in consideration any other buckets you have. You hear me t speak about this a lot, bucket planning, right? Taking from after tax dollars first, which is more the conventional way, using Roth assets if you have them. But again, this is where you sit with an advisor to walk you through what the right approach is for you to make sure, you know, it's the right uh, avenue for you to take. Because remember, this is not a one size fits all situation. And I think most people, one of their biggest fallacies we all do as individual investors or individual planners is we take it like what's good for Jim is good for me. What's good for Sally is good for me. It's just not the case. I have done this for nearly 20 years and I can tell you that every financial forecast, every goal oriented plan, every needs based analysis we've ran for a client have all been unique and tailored. So make sure you're not just getting some cookie cutter off the shelf situation and really go through what your numbers are and what your goals are with your money. Now, Ultimately, after I mentioned the phases, right? Phase one, build and grow. Phase two, transition. Phase three, distribute and deploy. No matter what phase you are in, planning and preparing for that next phase will always, I think, yield positive results. Not necessarily an investment return, so don't misconstrue that statement, but understanding that planning has a lot to do with accounting for the variabilities in life. I say this a lot, but we know for certain that there will be uncertainties. So planning for those matters. The better you, I think, articulate your goals for both the short term and the long term, the more likely it becomes you can achieve them, especially when it comes to your financial goals and ultimately the use of the money that you earned, saved, and invested. I wanna thank you for listening to the Make Your Money Matter Show. Remember, before acting on anything discussed today, speak with a financial advisor near you about your specific situation. Or again, if you'd like our help, you can visit us at onecapital.com or you can give us a call at 805-410-5454. And until next week, 
Always remember to make your money matter. The information in this show is educational and general in nature and does not take into consideration a listener's personal circumstances. Therefore, it is not intended to be a substitute for specific individualized financial, legal, or tax advice. To determine which strategies or investments may be suitable for you, consult the appropriate qualified professional prior to making a final decision.